Welcome to our economics class. We're going to look at demand and elasticity. So in economics, we refer demand as quantity of a good or service that consumers are willing and are able to buy. So there are two key uh, constituents of this definition. You want a particular good, but you should have one, the willingness to buy. Number two, you should have the ability. So demand is defined by these two characteristics, the willingness and ability to purchase at a specific period in time while holding all other factors constant. So we use a Latin word, citrus peribus, which means holding all other things constant. So demand actually represents an invest a negative relationship that exists between the price and the quantity. We mean inverse because as one variable is going up, the other variable is going down. So when the price of a good goes up, obviously you buy less of that one because that is how the law of demand stipulates. So demand is very critical in us understanding the market behaviors and also determining price as well as elasticity. Now, there are several factors that affect demand, some of which we are going to now use to explain the concept of elasticity. So price of that particular product is the most significant factor that affects demand. It is, in fact, the only factor that causes the movement along the demand curve. If the price of good increases from P1, to P2, so the price is now being in question. What happens to uh, the demand? Quantity demanded will decrease from Q1 to Q2. So this is causing a movement along this demand curve from point A to point B. The rest of the factors will cause a shift in the demand from demand one to demand what? Demand two, whether it's shifting outwards or shifting inwards. I'll explain that later. The other factor that affects demand is income. Income is critical for consumers because it determines their purchasing power. So we have three types of goods, if not two. There's a normal good under income, and there's an inferior good. So when our income increases and we demand more of a particular good, we call that a normal good. Conversely, it becomes an inferior good when our demand decreases as income rises. What kinds of goods would these ones be? For instance, secondhand clothes, when your income goes up, you wouldn't want to go back to what? To inferior goods, you don't want to go to boutique clothes. All right, so are we moving together? Are we together so far? Yes, we are. So now we go to the other factors that affect demand. We also have related goods. So on the related goods, we have what we call substitute goods. We also have what we call um, complementary goods. So when you're dealing with substitute goods, we're basically dealing with goods which have a competing attitude. Goods whereby if one product, the price increases, you will demand more of the other. So these are called substitute goods. They can substitute each other. For instance, coffee and tea. If coffee rises, you switch to demanding the other product which is close to coffee, which is tea. This is where we are saying citrus peribus, which means holding all things constant, avoiding preferences, or I don't take tea, I don't take rooibos, assuming these ones are perfect substitutes. All right, so we also have what we call complementary goods. 
from the term complementary, what do you understand? These are goods which are used together with equal ease. These are goods which are used with equal ease and they move hand in hand. For instance, car and fuel, one is rendered useless without the other. And so the complementary goods have what we call a negative elasticity of demand. They are negative because if the price of one good goes up, it therefore means that you demand less of the other good. So they are moving in opposite direction. So this is called a complementary good. So the other factors that will affect your demand could include preferences and tests. So changes in your tests, you go to the US, you come back to Zambia, you're no longer eating Shima. Not because Shima is expensive, but your tests have changed. So that is another factor that will affect your demand. Other uh, cultural differences or influences will affect your demand for particular good. Religion, the church, you go to. Other factors could be advertising, they affect you, right? Your demand, marketing strategy for a particular good. Population and demographics, sometimes the population no wonder people undertake a study in demography. It may have too many people in a particular town like Lusaka, it will fetch high demand. Sometimes you have too many old people who fetch a certain kind of product. So it is the demographics of that particular area or region that is very important in terms of population. We also have what we call consumer expectations. So we would choose to buy more of a particular good based on the information we have now about fluctuations in prices. For instance, if you hear fuel increase by midnight, you would want to buy it in, in excess now so that you don't get affected by the future price fluctuations. Or if you're buying stocks and you're told that the stocks will go down, you hold your money is and buy as their stock prices go down. The other factors that affect demand could be policies, government policies in terms of taxes and subsidies. Any questions so far? No. All right, now this takes us now to, based on these key principles we talked about, to what we call elasticity. So elasticity in economics refers to our sensitivity, our responsiveness, how we are able to react in terms of demand due to changes in other variables like price, like income, like advertising. All right, so you hear ShopRite has reduced bread by one quarter and usually buy we can pay. How do you react? That is what we call elasticity, sensitivity. If your income goes up, how will you react to the number of bags of millimeter you buy? If you are dealing with related goods, how do you cross over to one good? You are usually buying um a product that works hand in hand with another. For instance, you hear that data has become cheap because data and the router are complementary. So if you hear that data has gone down, you buy more routers or a router particularly because you now know that you are able to afford what? Data. So we are going to particularly look at three types of elasticity. There's what we call the price elasticity of demand. This looks at how uh, much quantity demanded of a service responds to the changes in prices. So the formula is given below. Our formula is therefore the percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. So elasticity of demand is negative. Why? 
because we know that there is an inverse relationship. We always have a negative relationship in assets of demand. The higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded, and vice versa. The lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded. So elasticity of demand in this case is always what? A positive, a negative, sorry. So in this case, we have ranges within which we can comment elasticity. If it's greater than one, you say it is elastic. If it's less than one, it is inelastic. If it's uh, equal to one, it is unit elastic. So you must bear in mind the signs eh, because people sometimes become too mathematical all of a sudden. So I'm using a number line like this one here. So I said, elasticity of demand is negative. So this positive side, we're not going to look at it because this is elasticity of supply. So here between zero and negative one, these are starting with zero point something. So this is inelastic. Whenever you hear negative 0 0.5, negative 0 point anything, it is what? Inelastic. All right. So if it's exactly one, it is unit elastic. By unitary, it means the percentage increase in price will commiserate with the percentage uh, decline in the quantity demanded. So if you increase price by 20% and you lose customers by 20%, it is 50-50, it's unit. It comes C, comes up. Then we have elastic, where the margin by which you increase your price is less than how much you lose your demand or quantity demanded. This is called elastic. So elastic demand, for instance, you increase your price maybe by 2%, then your demand just goes down by 10%. You need to be very sensitive. Okay. So uh, are we together so far? Are we making understanding of whatever I am talking about? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. So now we can delve into some mini calculations. But before I go there, I'll ask you to tell me which of these A, B, C, and D is elastic, unit elastic, and inelastic. So if you're given our A as negative 2, our B as negative one, our C as negative 0 0.2, and our C, our D as negative, uh, negative um, 20. So which one is elastic, inelastic, and inter-elastic? Which one is elastic, unit elastic? I think A is uh, elastic. A is elastic, correct? Mm -hmm. And then B should be unit, unit elastic. B is unit elastic, correct? Mm hmm. C in elastic. C is in elastic, correct? Then and D should be elastic as well. Yes, D is very elastic, yes. All right, then you get the concept. Now, 
how then do we calculate elasticity based on what I have just said? So since we said elasticity of demand is simply the percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price, or you can say it is Q2 minus Q1 divided by Q1 over the percentage change in prices, P2 minus P1, then you divide this by P1. If you want, you can leave it as a percentage times 100 here, times 100 there. Okay. So that is how we calculate the elasticity. So if a price one is, for instance, two quarts, then we're told that this has increased to four quarts. And our initial quantity we're buying, we're buying 500 units. And now because there's a decrease in, uh, the increase in price, we're obviously going to do what? To buy less of that commodity. So instead of buying 500, now you're buying 100 units. So who remembers what is the formula for losses of demand? Q what? Two minus Q what? Minus Q1. Over Q1 times 100. Then here, what do we have? P2 minus P1 over P1. P1 times 100. Times 100. So help me with the figures. What is our Q2? Hundred minus what? Five hundred over what? Five hundred times hundred, isn't it? All together. Should it not be five hundred minus hundred? Yes, it is. I wanted to see they are following. So our Q two is what? Is hundred. A Q one is five hundred. No, actually, it's correct. And a Q one is five hundred times hundred. Then the second part, our P two is what? Four minus what? Two over what? Two times what? Hundred. So elasticity of demand we know must be negative, isn't it? So here on top we're going to have negative what? Four hundred over five hundred. times 100, then here we're going to have what? 2 over 2 times what? 100. So what do we have here? Negative 80%. So what do we have down there? 100%. When you divide this, negative 80% over 100%, what do we get? That is 0 0.8. So what is our comment there? What kind of demand do we have there? Is it elastic? Is it inelastic? Or is it unit elastic? Elastic. She's saying elastic. Anyone else? Uh, inelastic. She's saying inelastic. Mm hmm why? Because it's uh, less than one. 
less than one. Yes, anything starting from 0 point something, it's less than one. Okay, All right together. Anything, just for anything that um, is starting from 0 point something is um, inelastic. Okay. All right, together. So yes, yes. I'll say I linked the elasticity of demand to also the factors that affect demand. So I was mentioning that if you know the factors that affect demand, basically it will be easy for you to understand the factors that affect elasticity of what of or elasticity generally. So what are the factors that affect elasticity? Let's go through them again. Number one, factors that affect elasticity of, of demand will include um, availability of substitutes. So if there are many close substitutes for a particular product, you easily switch. So if you're in a perfect market, for instance, and you know that tomato is one quarter, and somebody decides to sell one quarter to Ntingwe, you are not going to buy that because of a lot of close substitutes. So if there are close substitutes, you are going to find the cheapest. But if there's the only person selling those goods, you have no option. All right. The next factor that affects elasticity is whether it's a necessity or a luxury. For necessities like food, medical services, education, these ones are kind of inelastic, meaning you have no option you buy them, like it or not. In fact, the medical sector is one uh, area that has made us vulnerable. Sometimes when you're sick, you're not want to compare prices. Sometimes you just want to, to just buy. Okay. Are we together so far? Any questions? Then we go to any questions? Uh, no. Mm. Okay, so. And the other factor that affects elasticity is a portion of income. All right, so if your income is low, you know, in the pre urban areas, they will really want to find value for money. So they will find in the tomato or five quarter, uh, most people who are in high earning brackets will not even mind, they'll buy at a quick shop. But those ones who, whose proportion of income is small, they'll rather go where there's high purchasing. Power. Other factors that affect elasticity can vary with time. In the short term, consumers do not have an option. They will buy. It is what? Less elastic. Because something has been introduced. The solar thing is as they came, we didn't have shedding so much then. But over time, people want to get to adapt to alternative and cheaper ways of living life. Then also, the definition of the market can affect our elasticity. So if it's a narrow or broad product range, it will affect elasticity. For instance, demand for a specific brand can be less elastic than the demand for a general category. So there are certain specific uh, brands that have a small range, you cannot find alternatives. So this is almost close to the first principle that we discussed. All right, so it is therefore very important to, as a manager, really know when best to increase prices or uh, not affect prices because being careless about that will affect the business as a whole. Sometimes when the demand is elastic, you could use it in a positive way. By reducing prices even by one quarter, you discover that you are going to allure 
a big market range. For instance, how that shop right is able to mess with our minds. Three quarter, 99 ingwe, and the other shop is selling uh, at four quarter. It's almost the same thing, but because you've seen a three, you think you're saving. Of course, every penny counts. Also, the consumer habits and addiction to affect elasticity. Some habits like smoking, no matter how the prices are fluctuated, an addiction, so demand is inelastic. So take the concept of inelasticity in insensitivity. So consumers will be willing to pay high prices for commodities, which are even higher as long as the addictions. Be it people still buy and or force complain. And the degree of specificity, if there's high specific and unique good, they become less elastic, less sensitive, less prone to grip scrutiny. Generic goods, on the other hand, are less, it's just the same point I talked about. Durability, a product that is durable, um, may tend to have more elastic demand since consumers can delay purchasing if prices increase or non-durable are less elastic. Okay, so now we will tend to look at an example that I wanted us to look at. This is our question in question. Question one. So we have frustrated managerial economics student and you decide to abandon the academic career. So this person is James and he sets up a business in city market where he sells prepackaged mini meal packs. Pamela as well begins to package her pants for ladies. So at a price of 50 quarter, James manages to sell 50 pants every month. Wow. 45 mini meal packs are sold um, away every month at six a quarter. His friend Walia takes advantage of this and seizes the opportunity to sell complimentary ladies' bras in James's shop, where at least 30 bras are sold away every month at 75 quarter each. So with both booming businesses, James's wife, Sylvia, advises him that he could actually increase his business sales by increasing both the price of pants and that of mini meal to 75 respectively. So James follows his proposal religiously and immediately observes the effects of these increases in the reduction of the monthly demand for the two goods to 30 and to 40 units respectively. So calculate the price elasticity of demand for the pants and the mini meal respectively. Are they elastic, inelastic, and explain why. So this is a critical analytical question that desires us to really analyze objectively. So now, what are we given in this data? We're given the following information, the price fluctuations before the price increases and after the adjustments in the price increases. So let's start with the pants. So by the way, the other commodities are not asked at this moment, the brass. So the initial price that James was setting was at 50 quarter. And these ones were fetching 50 units in a month. Then he decides to increase the new price to 75. And now what happens, the new quantity of the pants, they are selling for only 30 units in a month. So what is the impact of this price increase by gems? So remember, Q2 minus Q1 over Q1 times 100 if you want. So this 100 will cancel out, so I can remove it if you want. Then P2 is what? Minus P1 over P1, so 75 minus 50 over 50, 30 minus 50 over 50. So when you compute this, you're going to get Elasticity of demand for the panthers, negative 0 0.8. Can somebody comment on this? What is happening here? Aida?
It is inelastic. Good. The demand is inelastic. All right. So this simply means the proportion by which he increased his prices. Um, will be insignificant. So it is inelastic. So meaning a 1% increase in price results in a negative 0.8% decrease in quantity demanded. All right. Are we together? Is that clear from what has been explained initially? Very clear. Okay. Mm -mm. And let's go to the second part of the question. We were told to explain whether it's elastic or elastic and why. So what is your comment? Is it elastic or elastic? We've already explained this inelastic. Why? Because the proportion by which the price was increased is less compared to the proportion by which the quantity decreased. Are you together? Yes. So let's go to Sylvia now. So we, in this information that is cluster that I read, we will discover that the millimeter, which was at 60, selling at 45 units in a month, increased 75 across the board, remember, but now it's selling for 40 units in a month. So using the same formula, let's see what is coming of the elasticity for millimeter. So when you do the computations, you're going to find that. What's the comment on the answer? Um, it's also inelastic. Yes, yeah, it's also inelastic. Yeah. All right, so... Which one is more elastic? This one though is more elastic. So both products are less than one. So the pants, we can say if we increase 1% price, it will result in a decrease in quantity for pants at negative 0.8%. So since the value is less than one, you can say it is elastic. Same with minimum. If we increase price by 1%, 0.033% will be the decrease in the quantity demand. It is also inelastic. All right. So the next question that was being asked was, um, use the concept of elasticity and revenue to determine and justify whether it was worth uh, increasing their prices in that context. If I go to the answers, was it worth increasing the prices? Was it? Was it worth increasing the prices? No, it was. Anyone else? Yes, it was. Whenever demand is inelastic, there it means that the proportion by which you increase the prices uh, when you are trying to compare with the proportion by which you are losing demand, it will be negligible but also we need to compare with the revenues as well we need to calculate the revenues because sometimes inevitably by increasing the prices are going to reduce 
the quantity demanded, one or the other. But these ones have a very uh, closely related relationship. So when the price elasticity of demand is less than one, we say it is inelastic. Therefore, an increase in price will inevitably result in a proportional decrease uh, in a quantity demanded. Of course, smaller because it's inelastic. If it was higher, it would be elastic. So this means that the total revenue may increase when the price increases. So in short, when demand is elastic, the prices will rise at a smaller rate. Now, it will raise the revenue. So gems and silver will have to increase the prices of pants and medium meal since the products are inelastic. So the product did not lead to substantial decrease in what quantity demanded. So the result of the reduction uh, in quantity was outweighed by the increase in the price. So they didn't do higher total revenue. So you get the concept that I'm, I'm trying to bring out in there, yeah? Yes, 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 I do. So much has increased the bad, but it depends on the situation. In the situation where it is inelastic, it's okay to increase because yeah, they will not mind. If I were to practically ask you how much a razor blade is or how much a nail cutter is, because these are real life issues, you may not probably know the actual. If you find that five quarters to buy, if you found that uh, uh, 10 quarters to buy, because you don't, you don't buy them every day. But for bread, even with one quarter, you notice because these we do them on a daily basis. You get it. So a new companion comes in, Walia, we are told. So Walia is selling a complimentary good of uh ladies' bras in Jepsy's shop. Now these ones were at least 30, they sold every month at 75 quarter each. So this is perhaps what caused them to increase at 75 as well. So this person who's coming in our office is selling at a high price. Why not unify the product? So now in this case, we are being asked to say after the ordeal while yeah, developing a strong hate towards silver, stop what talking to her to say, uh -uh. why are you increasing your prices also? So use the concept of elasticity Length in class and explain why Valia is um, getting upset. Why should Valia get upset? I explained all this. So Valia is coming in as a compliment to Valia, as low as James and Sylvia would be. It is a good thing because if, for instance, you bring in a car and fuel is low, it will complement you. But where the fuel also goes up, people will either stop buying both or will moderate buying cars. You get the concept. So in this case, Wally's reaction can be explained in the concept of elasticity of the products of uh, ladies' bras being a complement to pants and minimums, but specifically pants. So in James's shop, there's a significant price increase in those products might decrease what their sales. So since she's a complementary to the pants, there will be a negative cross price elasticity. Remember I said cross price elasticity has a negative what? Relationship. So if you have conflicts and milk, if milk goes up, you don't buy milk and eventually don't buy what? Uh, conflicts. Same with the Christian life, if you have Bible study and praying, these complement each other. So the soul that stops Bible study will eventually stop doing both of them in the near future. So it's important to complement these two. So since they're complementary goods and have a negative cost price elasticity, so an increase in the price of the pants, an increase in the minimum will potentially reduce the demand in both the uh, pants and also the bras that uh, Walia has brought into the shop. So this is the reason why Walia is upset. Interesting, isn't it? All right. 
So using your knowledge of the factors that influence price elasticity, determine and explain the possible reasons for the observed differences in price elasticities for medium mu and pant. So in short, what are the factors of price elasticity? The factors that can influence the differences are the availability of what substitutes. So if medium mu has fewer substitutes compared to the pant, its demand will be less elastic. So pant may have uh, close substitutes making their demand more elastic. So here, the medium mu may not be affected so much because it's independent, it has nothing to do with pant. Then here, medium mu also comes in as a step of food, which is a necessity. So it is less likely to be affected even if it was to increase. So it is less likely to be what elastic because people will still continue buying even if the prices of minimum go up. This is a very good example and very applied because it brings out the concepts of elasticity as they should be. Then income proportion. So if minimum uh, constitutes a larger portion of consumers, so income would be more dedicated to medium mu than to pant. In this case, uh, people will be more sensitive to price changes in small items like pants compared to an essential product. So, um, time horizon. In the short run, people here might not really have alternatives to medium mu. So they will buy it over time. Perhaps they will look for other alternatives like cassava if minimum goes up. So the short run being a factor as time horizon, people will still buy. The other factor is brand loyalty. So uh, if there's strong brand loyalty for pants or minimum, the demand might be less uh, elastic. So now I'm looking at it in terms of the advantages of the shop, depending on how branding James and Sylvia have done and voila. So even if the prices would go up, only laggards, we call them laggards in marketing because these are people who, even if they are new stuff in the market, they'll still be loyal to you. So brand loyalty is also another aspect that affects elasticity. So to them, they will survive on a few neighbors and friends just because they are known for regardless of the prices that may go up, being their customers. So thank you so much for your time. This is what I wanted us to really actualize today in its um, applied perspective.